and my hope is that my Republican friends, but also Democrats, say to themselves, let's be practical and let's do both. Let's not just do one or the other, let's do both. Over time I think the transition is going to be more and more clean energy and over time. Fossil fuels become less prominent in our overall energy mix. But we've got to do both. Question, how confident are you there will be that kind of consensus for that double-edged approach? President Obama, I am just a eternal optimist and so it's the right thing to do. And all I can do is just to keep on making the argument about what's right for. The country and assume that over time people, regardless of party. regardless of their particular political positions, are going to gravitate towards the truth. Okay. I'm going to take two more. Let's see. Question, how about the back? President Obama, well, I just want to make sure that I was getting a balance here, so go ahead, Chuck. Question, a woof. President Obama, why is everybody moaning about Todd? Question, he's too good. His questions are too precise. Question, Iran we got the news today that they're doing. More of these trying to enhance this uranium even more. Obviously Secretary Gates today in Paris was quoted as saying basically the dialogue seems to be over and now. The question is sanctions. 
Where are we on sanctions? How close is this? I know you had sort of an end of the year. Deadline when you stood up there with Sarkozy and Brown. It's now February. How quickly is this moving along? President Obama, well, it's moving along fairly quickly. I think that we have bent over backwards to say to the Islamic Republic of Iran that we are willing to have a constructive conversation about how they can align themselves with international norms and rules and re-enter as full members of the international community. The most obvious attempt was when we gave them an offer that said we are going to provide the conversion of some of the low enriched uranium that they already have into the isotopes that they need. For their medical research and for hospitals that would serve up to a million Iranian citizens. They rejected it although one of the difficulties in dealing with Iran over the last several months is It's not always clear who's speaking on behalf of the government, and we get a lot of different, mixed signals. But what's clear is, is that they have not said yes to an agreement that Russia, China, Germany, France, Great Britain, and the United States all said was a good deal. And that the director of the IAEA said was the right thing to do and that Iran should accept. That indicates to us that, despite their posturing that their nuclear power is only for civilian use. that they in fact continue to pursue a course that would lead to weaponization. And that is not acceptable to the international community, not just to the United States. So what we've said from the start was we're moving on dual tracks.
if you want to accept the kinds of agreements with the international community that lead you down a path of being a member of good standing, then we welcome you. If not, Question, haven't they responded, though? I mean, by deciding to do what they did, with these. President Obama, well, I'm getting to that. Question, okay. President Obama, and if not, then the next step is sanctions. They have made their choice so far, although the door is still open. And what we are going to be working on over the next several weeks is developing a significant regime of sanctions that will indicate to them how isolated they are from the international community as a whole. Question, what do you mean by regime of sanctions? President Obama, well, meaning that there's going to be a question, some will be UN and some will be. President Obama, we are going to be looking at a variety of ways in which countries indicate to Iran that their approach is unacceptable. and the UN will be one aspect of that broader effort. Question, China will be there? You're confident? President Obama, well, the we are confident right now that the international community is unified around Iran's misbehavior in this area. How China operates at the Security Council as we pursue sanctions is something that we're going to have to see. One thing I'm pleased about is to see how forward-leaning the Russians have been on this issue.
I think they clearly have seen that Iran hasn't been serious about solving. What is a solvable dispute between Iran and the international community? All right. I'm going to make this the last question. And I'll take somebody from the back, yes. Question, me. President Obama, yes. Question, thanks for doing this. It's been a while. On health care, the Republicans are asking whether the February 25th session will include. Economists and public interest groups and people supporting your side, or will it just be the members of Congress? And on Anthem Blue Cross, do you have the authority to go in and tell? A private company they can't charge that how will you stop them? President Obama, well, I don't have the authority as I understand it. I can't simply issue an executive order lowering everybody's rates. If I could I would have done that already and saved myself a lot of grief on capital. Hill. That's why reform is so important. That's why the status quo is unacceptable. But there is no shortcut in dealing with this issue. I know the American people get frustrated in debating something like health care because you get a whole bunch of different claims being made by different groups and different interests. It is a big, complicated, tough issue. But what is also true is that without some action on the part of Congress, It is very unlikely that we see any improvement over the current trajectory.
and the current trajectory is premiums keep on going up 10, 15, 20, 30 percent. The current trajectory is more and more people are losing health care. I don't know if people noted, because during the health care debate everybody was. Saying the president is trying to take over a government takeover of health care. I don't know if anybody noticed that for the first time this year you saw more people. getting health care from government than you did from the private sector not because of anything we did. But because more and more people are losing their health care. from their employers. It's becoming unaffordable. That's what we're trying to prevent. We want people to be able to get health care from their employers. But we also understand that you've got to fix the system so that people are able to get it at affordable rates and small businesses can afford to give their employees insurance at an affordable rate. And that's not happening right now. To your question about the 25th, my hope is that this doesn't end up being political theater. as I think some of you have phrased it. I want a substantive discussion. We haven't refined exactly how the agenda is going to go that day. We want to talk with both the Democratic and Republican leaders to find out what they think would be most useful. I do want to make sure that there's some people like the Congressional Budget Office. For example, that are considered nonpartisan, who can answer questions. In this whole health care debate, I'm reminded of the story that was told about Senator Moynihan.
who was I guess in an argument with one of his colleagues, and his colleague was losing the argument. So he got a little flustered and said to Senator Moynihan, well, I'm entitled to my own opinion. And Senator Moynihan said, well, you're entitled to your own opinion. But you're not entitled to your own facts. I think that's the key to a successful dialogue on the 25th or on healthcare. Let's establish some common facts. Let's establish what the issues are, what the problems are. And let's test out in front of the American people what ideas work and what ideas don't. And if we can establish that factual accuracy about how different approaches would work. Then I think we can make some progress. And it may be that some of the facts that come up are ones that make my party a little bit uncomfortable. So if it's established that by working seriously on medical malpractice and tort reform that we can reduce some of those costs. I've said from the beginning of this debate I'd be willing to work on that. On the other hand, if I'm told that that is only a fraction of the problem and that is not the biggest driver of health care costs, then I'm also going to insist. Okay, let's look at that as one aspect of it, but what else are we willing to do? And this is where it gets back to the point I was making earlier. Bipartisanship cannot mean simply that Democrats give up everything that they believe in. Find a handful of things that Republicans have been advocating for and we do those things, and then we have bipartisanship. That's not how it works in any other realm of life.
that's certainly not how it works in my marriage with Michelle, although I usually do give in most of the time. But the there's got to be some give and take, and that's what I'm hoping can be accomplished. And I'm confident that's what the American people are looking for.